Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. In this Edge TX snippet, I'm going to show you how to make some common airplane mixes in Edge TX. It doesn't seem to matter how many videos I make when it comes to mixes, somebody always has a mix that's a little bit different than what I show. So in this video I'd like to show you a couple of different techniques so you can learn how to make your own mixes. I'm going to show you a couple of very common ones, feel free to borrow them, but the main thing to pay attention to in this video is the techniques that I use to create the mix. If you can pay attention to those and grasp those concepts, then you'll be able to make any mix you want. So let's get started. I'll give you a quick little rundown on what's going on on this little airplane model that I have, and then we'll get into the mixes. First off, I've got a very basic model configuration. I've got my ailerons set up. Notice how I've got ailerons moving. So ailerons there, elevator up and down here, rudder is on the left side. So I've got rudder, no propeller on this one, but my throttle is still this stick. And I also have flaps. So check out my left slider. I'm gonna activate my flaps and you'll see the flaps move right there. So there are my flaps. When my slider is all the way up, the flaps are level with the ailerons. And then when the fla flaps are fully deployed, the left slider is all the way down and that puts the flaps all the way down. So that's my basic configuration. Now I'm gonna show you the mixes that we're gonna cover in the video. I have my mixes assigned to a switch. So if I turn SG up or away from me, the, all the mixes are disabled for the different things that I've set up on this radio. When I pull SG toward me, now all my mixes are enabled. So the first mix I want to show you is a real simple one. That's an aileron to rudder mix. You would use this if you have a coupling issue. And, and if your rudder always needs to be used in order to keep a coordinated turn on your plane, and you want to add a little bit of a mix to cheat, you can do this mix. So notice what will happen when I make a right hand turn. This aileron will go up and the rudder will go to the right. So here we go with a right hand turn. Now notice this aileron goes up, this aileron goes down, and see how my rudder is moving to the right. Okay. Now if I make a left hand turn, this aileron goes up, this one goes down, and my rudder goes to the left. That's a very common mix on airplanes like say a Piper Cub because they need rudder in order to make the turn. And the other thing that's very common about this one is that you'll notice that the rudder moves equidistant from center based on which direction I'm making the turn. Not all your mixes do that, and we're gonna cover some of those techniques later. So let's cover this mix. Let me explain how I did this mix in the radio, and then we'll move on to the next one. Whenever I'm working on a mix, the first thing that I always ask myself is, what is the thing that needs to be corrected? So in this case, the rudder needs to be corrected because when I make an aileron turn, I need that adjustment to occur on my rudder. If I'm not, and, and guys, this is, this is a cheater mix. So please don't leave a comment saying, well, you should learn how to fly a rudder. That's not the point. This, the point is about learning how to create mixes, okay? That's what the point is. So in this model, um, what I'm gonna do is focus on the rudder itself. So notice on, on mix line number four, I've got rudder enabled at 100%. That's a standard mix line. And then I've got a line in here that says add 70% aileron or for 70% of my aileron travel, go ahead and mix that with the rudder. That's what gives us the mix. So as I move this stick, my aileron stick, it's the thing that needs correcting, the rudder, and the thing that's doing the correcting. The thing that's doing the correcting is the aileron. As I move the aileron, that rudder is getting moved. That's the thing that needs to be corrected. What I mean by that is we don't want the rudder sitting at center. We want the rudder to move. So when I move this aileron stick, that's the thing that's doing the correction. The rudder is the thing that needs to be corrected. That's what's moving. Now, regarding the percentages, you have to tinker with this. I can't give you a formula for this. All I can tell you is this, was work, this is what works for my model. So in my case, my rudder is set up at 100% movement and my ailerons are set up at 70% for the mix value on the rudder. And then also notice that the final entry in this line is SG down. What that means is if SG is down toward me, then this mix is active. If SG is away, you notice how that line turned white? That mix is no longer active. See, my rudder doesn't move anymore with my aileron. The next mix is a elevator and throttle mix. Now, if you remember when I did the Goblin video, I gave it full throttle and it pitched up a little bit. There are a couple of different ways mechanically you can solve that, like adjusting your CG or changing your throws or detrim, you know, adjusting your trim. So if you want a throttle to elevator mix, here's how I did it. 
remember, the thing that needs to be corrected is the elevator. That's the thing that needs to be changed, right? When we add full throttle, we want the elevator to pitch down a little bit. We want, when, when in that case, when I, when I hit it real hard, the plane climbed up. So what we want to do is add a little down elevator to prevent that from climbing up. So I'll show you what it looks like, and then we'll run through the configuration. I'm going to turn my mix switch on. And now notice that when my stick is in the throttle off position, my elevator is neutral. And as I move through the 50% mark on my throttle, the elevator hasn't changed at all. But now as I move past 50% and get into high throttle, notice that elevator, elevator is moving. You see that as I move past 50%, the elevator is pitching down. Now, this is a model, it's a demonstration, so my throws are a little exaggerated, I know that. But if you have a need for doing this in flight, you won't. You probably won't need that much down elevator. This is just an exaggeration, so it's easy for you to see. Okay, so I'll push forward, the elevator goes down, I come back to the center position, the elevator is neutral, and any throttle position in between off and 50%, there's no movement on the throttle. Okay, let's take a look at how I did that. Remember, it's the elevator that needs to be adjusted, and the thing that's doing the adjustment is the throttle. That's this line right here. So we'll edit that, and we'll take a look at it. So I'm using my throttle as the source. That the, that's the thing that's doing the correction. I have my weight set at 20% and my offset set at zero, but notice the differential down here is at 100. That's what gives me that zero movement from zero it's actually negative 100 to zero is the real output number. So at negative 100 to zero, there's no movement on that elevator. And then from zero to positive 100, we get that down elevator movement. That's accomplished by using the differential. So I used a differential of 100%, and that means the only time that this mix takes effect is from zero to positive 100. And I'm using a weight of 20. If I wanted less down elevator here, I would simply reduce that weight a little bit. So I can reduce it, say, to six. Now it's just a very small amount. You can probably see it with my, I don't know if you can see it at all, but it is moving. Yeah, you can barely see it right here on the, on the elevator side, but it is moving. So again, I used a higher value just in order to exaggerate the movements and make it easy for you to see on the video. So there, we're back to 20, and now you can clearly see that elevator moving as I move my throttle stick, okay? But it only pitches down, it doesn't pitch up. Okay, so that is a throttle to elevator mix that you can make in case your plane has a tendency to pitch up and you can't seem to correct it mechanically. All right, let's get into the final mix. The last one is a flat mix, and in the flat mix, the idea here is to give a little down elevator when I pull flaps. So when I add flaps, what I'm looking for is as these flaps go down, I want a little bit of help with the elevator, and I want that elevator to go down. Okay, so here's flaps stowed. Flaps are in the park position. I'm going to do flaps down, and you can see the elevator going down. That'll prevent that ballooning. You could even do things like put this on a timer and have that just be in effect for a certain period of time if you really wanted to get creative, which is something you might want to do for an actual flaps configuration. But that's an advanced topic for another day. All right, let's take a look at that configuration. Again, we're on the elevator because the elevator is the thing that needs to be fixed. That's the thing that needs the correction. So I'm focusing on the elevator for the mix. That's why I'm on channel two and I'm looking at the elevator. The next thing we'll do is add a line in that elevator mix line that says when the flaps, which are controlled by LS, that's my left hand switch or slider, when those are deployed at negative 15, then that negative 15 for weight gets mixed in with whatever the elevator position is. Also notice that I have an offset of 15. So effectively what this, this does is it gives me 30% travel, okay, 30% travel, because you have to add these two things together. What we're doing is we're moving that curve down to negative 15 so that we don't want the elevator, when I park these flaps, we don't want the elevator to go up. We don't want to do that. That's why you use an offset. By using an offset, we prevent the elevator from going up when the flaps are parked. And by putting that negative 15 offset in, we assure that the elevator stays flat when the flaps are in the park position. So the entire weight is only applied in a downward motion on the elevator. All right, let's take a look at what that looks like on the channel monitor. I'm gonna go ahead and bring the channel monitor up. Notice I've got my flaps in the park position and we're gonna pay attention to this elevator line. So right now we're at zero and as I deploy those flaps, we go from zero all the way down to 30% right there. 
since you stuck around to the end, I've got a little bonus material for you. You might have noticed that in the mixer, I didn't use inputs for everything. I used the LS hardware knob in this mixer. I did that for a reason, and the reason is because I wanted to show you this. On my input screen, I didn't define a flaps input. I could have. I could have easily created an input with flaps, put a number in there, and assigned the left slider as the control mechanism. The reason I didn't do it is because I wanted to show you why you use inputs and mixes. In this case, any adjustment that I want to make to my ailerons, elevator, throttle, or rudder, I can do that here and this value gets fed into the mixer. So any value that I make a change on here, anywhere I use aileron as an input source will be applied in the mixer, okay? Now, if you look in the mixer and you notice that I've got LS here, I've got LS here, and I also have LS down here. Well, the reason for that is because in this configuration, these two flaps are on different channels. So I've got, I've got flaps on channel six, and then I've got flaps on channel three. That's where my flaps exist in this configuration. And then in my mixer, I added LS or the, the, the hardware switch as a percentage value for my elevator flaps mix. Here's the thing. If I make any changes in this configuration, either to this percentage or this percentage, notice how they're off. That one says 30, that says 25. You're setting yourself up to have differences in your configuration. So watch flap two. See how that reads 50% and flap one reads 60%? That's because my configuration isn't the same. And that's one of the reasons you wanna use input. Use input and you avoid this kind of problem altogether. Now I can easily fix that simply by going in and making an adjustment and setting, I have 30% here. All I have to do is set this one to negative 30% and that'll solve the problem. But see all the changes you have to make? So I have to do that, then I have to do this, and then I can look at my mixer or my channel monitor and I should be able to see everything being equal. See, I've got negative 60 and 60 now. This is the reason that you use inputs. If you're gonna use a control surface in a mix line, and in, especially if you're gonna do it in multiple places, it's a good idea to define an input. Had I defined an input, I wouldn't have to worry about this differential that I saw between this flap setting and that flap setting. That's why you use inputs. Um, if you don't do it, you have to find every instance of LS in this mix configuration and make the appropriate change. You might have to make it in the mix itself. You might have to make it in a channel six, in a channel three. You have to hunt through the mixer and find it. That's the problem. It's better just to set it up as an input. And then if you need to make an adjustment, say I don't want the flaps to go to 30, I only want them to go to 25. I simply make one adjustment on the input side and therefore anything from that point on through the mixer and output uses the value established in the input screen. Okay, that's all I've got on setting up mixes on Edge TX. I'm going to encourage you guys to go play with it. You can use the techniques I used here to help teach yourself how to create mixes, but don't get too wrapped around the axle exactly how I used 20% here and 100% there and 15 and negative 50. That's not the point. The point is learn about the techniques, right? Learn why you use an offset, why you use a differential, where you apply your mix lines so you can get your model to behave the way you want to. That's the key in this video. If you take that away from this video, then you win. I'm gonna tell you guys right now, I'm not gonna answer any questions about how to create a mix. I've given you some techniques in here on how to create mixes. Go experiment with it, try it. You can't hurt anything. You can go in here and fool around all you want, play around, create mixes and, and tinker with it and discover on your own. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy. Hey, if you like the work I do here on RC Video Reviews, please consider joining me on Patreon. For about the price of a cup of coffee, you can help me keep making videos just like this one. If you'd like to help out, there's a link in the description and on your screen.